Sometimes I wonder if my dog doesn't want to open the door because he's scared of the door or because he wants me to get up. And there we go. Oh, starting over again, are we? <laughs> <laughs> My guys, we're here playing some Yu-Gi-Oh. Hello. Maybe you heard of it. Most likely you have, because it's been around for quite a long time. Why don't, uh, why don't I slip into something a little bit more comfortable? There we go. I slipped into something a little bit more comfortable. Don't ask how. Uh, freaking armor is more comfortable than anything else. Oh, that's what you're wearing. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Hey guys. Um, we have uh a, a decently a decently special uh game today, mostly in the fact that uh this is the first game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Five Darps since the unfortunate passing of Kazuki Takahashi. Uh, last week and we wanted to make sure that we had uh a little bit of a of a tribute to him uh ready for for today's game um i made sure to uh get this done din made it for me thank you very much din 
um, made it very nice for me. Uh, it's a dark magician esque thing. Has five, have the five darts thing in the front. It's really nice. <laughs> um, and uh, we also uh, said fuck it, and we decided to uh, <laughs> we decided to uh, play the uh, the music in the background here. Um, so uh, the music you just heard obviously was uh, a remix of the Yu Gi Oh main theme, uh, and then the full version of the Yu Gi Oh season zero opening, and. If we get demonetized or muted or anything because of that, we don't give a fuck. <laughs> There's not a single fuck to be given. Um, we are we are we are happy to do so uh, because Kazuki Takahashi is a great man. Let's go ahead and switch over so we can see another thing that uh, was prepared this time by Will uh, in our our little thing here while we're while we're gonna chat a little bit. Kazuki Takahashi obviously was a great man, inspired quite a lot of stuff in my life, uh, as well as some of the rest of our lives here, I'm sure. Um, I know that me and Will in particular have a humongous uh, love and affection for this man. I'm not sure about, I'm not sure if everybody has their own stories here in our, in our group, uh, but obviously um, I have been affected by this since I was in the sixth grade, I think. Um, and I'm currently 33 years old, <laughs> so <laughs> there is, there is quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of history as for the, the Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, not only card game, but also the anime, uh, that has, uh, that has come to me. Um, I mentioned it, uh, briefly, uh, in one of my streams, but the first time I ever cried in front of my, my fellow man in school was because I was moving away and one of my teachers wouldn't give me back my Yu-Gi-Oh cards. <laughs> what an awful teacher. <laughs> yeah, fuck him, good damn. Uh, there was obviously the uh, the fact that I got into I got into the abridging scene back whenever Yu-Gi-Oh bridge became uh, became a thing. Uh, very shortly after that happened, um, really set a, another stage of my life going forward. Um, there was obviously the different duels, different games that I've that I've played throughout everything, uh, including uh, mostly through all of the original Yu-Gi-Oh, GX, and 5Ds have been very influential as far as their storytelling and stuff on me. Um, and of course, uh, the first game we ever we ever broadcasted here on the Summoners Network channel was the original DARP Duel Academy RP uh, that uh, set the stage for me to even be able to do what I do right now for everybody. So I'm very happy uh, as someone who is currently doing a Yu-Gi-Oh game um, that Kazuki Takahashi was, uh, was in my life. Um, we want to keep things brief, obviously, but uh, if anybody else here has anything they want to say about Kazuki Takahashi and about how anything they might've, it might've happened uh, in their lives, we can, we can go to you guys. I know at least Will has something to say. Well, he's probably waiting to be last. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll I'll take the dive. I'll go. I'll Hell go. yeah. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh was one of the. It was the second anime I watched, but it was one of the first ones that I watched from episodes one till the last episode, including all the filler arcs, mm -hmm. and also Capsule Monsters. I do enjoy Capsule Monsters. Don't <laughs> at me. And it was one of those few animes that I could watch in the UK because the UK was terrible for anime, so I'll be watching it every six, at six o'clock in the morning, watching one episode or two. Sometimes there'll be reruns, and like it was one of those things that just got me hyped in the morning. And unfortunately, I couldn't buy you a cards because my parents didn't give me allowance or anything, so I would get cards from my, one of my neighbors, and it just developed and developed. And then it got to a point where Comic Con, I think 2014, I actually entered the Yu-Gi-Oh tournament oh, hell yeah. and met a bunch of people. I still have my Konami ID card, you know, the really old Dude, ones. Dude, I have three of those. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like the really old ones. And yeah. like, like you're being identified out of here. And like, if it wasn't for that card game, I wouldn't be as social and have taken that chance at that tournament and won. Hell yeah, dude. 
Yeah. Fuck yeah, yeah. look at Linda over here. Yeah. I've only ever yeah, I've only ever won two tournaments. Uh <laughs> and the Konami IDs I have were from two tournaments that I lost, which is funny. The the ones I won, they didn't ask for it. Um and I have one Konami ID for whenever I was a judge. Uh and it has judge on it. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And I had that for like a year, so that was fun. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh just connected people. Does Emerald have anything to say about uh, about Yu-Gi-Oh? It's been pretty much like not as huge part of my life as y'all, but it was just the thing that me and my friends would play a lot from like from like literally kindergarten even up through fucking high school. I didn't have the best decks. In fact, I. Didn't really know how to duel, despite having the cards. But it was a lot of fun. No one knows how to duel immediately. I didn't know how to duel until exactly. I became a judge. Yeah. <laughs> and then you know, the entire I could time never up get... until then, I thought that the a round, like a single turn, was my turn and your turn. <laughs> That's one turn. Yeah. My but, God, like, I'll put it like this, Emerald. When I saw it, I thought fusion monsters were just things you put in your deck. <laughs> <laughs> No. There was no concept of an extra deck to me. <laughs> the extra deck wasn't real. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about not being here. No, no. I, I was I was assuming you're gonna you're gonna go last because you wanted to you wanted to do something. So let's let's not worry about that. Let's not worry about that. Yeah. Hug hug. Um, Fomo, do you have anything to say about Yu Gi Oh? Uh, well, I think it's like again for for you guys in the in the, in the group. You know for a fact they started playing this game literally when we were going to do this RP. Like I had. <laughs> I had some concept of Yu-Gi-Oh, but I my earliest memory of Yu-Gi-Oh was actually a peripheral one. Uh, GX aired pretty commonly over here in Latin America mm -hmm. uh, through a channel called JetX, and it was the only place where it aired. Uh, ever. It, they, they never aired anything else. It was only GX. The original <laughs> never existed. Uh, Sounds like a I great freaking network. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I should remember <laughs> JetX. <laughs> They would it's the one with the, like the weird fucking yeah. circle with the with the, yeah, the X the on it. Eye. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I had like X legs or something. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. it was it aired every single time in the morning around eight a.m. So I kind of like peripherally watch it because then I have to go to school. Uh, but the reason I'm bringing that up is because my brother got really into it from watching the GX uh, episodes. So I actually had for a while some Yu-Gi-Oh cards of my own. I had a Karibo and I had a Time Wizard. <laughs> and those were the first cards I ever owned of Yu-Gi-Oh! And I wasn't expecting to end up actually playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, <laughs> what, like, 18 years, like, 19, no, more than that, years later? Just, that's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely, like, the newest comer in this little group, but it's- And you're already the best duelist here! <laughs> I'm, I'm already the best duelist in America, baby. <laughs> I think I think my favorite uh, thing to talk about, as far as Yu-Gi-Oh is concerned and FOMO is concerned, is that uh, the DARP, the uh, the original DARP, was the first time we started getting a whole bunch of like little mini arts from FOMO. Yeah, that's where they first started showing up, and I had no confession. I had no idea what anything was about for the majority of what DARP was. If you asked me to explain the plot of DARP, I could not explain it. I to think you. you. I think you joined the channel. A little bit before we were doing DARP, and then like when, when it happened, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so mm -hmm. you joined around the time, like around the time. No, because you told you're the one that told me to even get a Discord. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was like, you're on your stream. hey, why don't you do Discord? Like a fucking devil inside your ear for the future. <laughs> but yeah, my favorite, my favorite part of uh, of thinking about thinking about Yu Gi Oh with with FOMO is just the the idea that in the in that first uh, DARP session we got some some little doodles and they were super freaking freaking neato and amazing. I'm like, ah, oh my god, we got doodles. the very first doodle I ever did. It was one where they were all getting out of the boat. Yeah. And... <laughs> <laughs> I think one of my favorite doodles is I have a rope and I'm not afraid to use it. Use it. <laughs> So, uh, so Will, do you have do you have some some things you wanna you wanna you wanna say? Oh uh, yeah, they're they're mostly like stories. Uh, unfortunately, I I don't have any tournament stories. I never went to a tournament ever in my life. That's so, fine. yeah, I didn't really have a vehicle or anything to do tournaments and all that. When Yu-Gi-Oh! was introduced in my life, I remember it was pretty much a love at first sight kind of deal. I remember seeing the trailers 
Beck and YTV, which was the Canadian like a cartoon area thing. So many networks. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad they all fucking died. Damn. Yeah, pulling out for JX. But um, I, I remember. That's how I learned about time zones because I missed the first episode because they set a specific time. I think it was like seven o'clock or something or six o'clock. But I was uh, Central Time, not Eastern Standard Time, and I didn't know what that was ah, until. Get uh, fucked. Yeah, so I start from the second episode, which is kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> but no. There was something about the monster designs especially that really appealed to me, and I was not wrong about that. It, I was into Pokemon, I was into Digimon, and now I had Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah. It was, yeah, it, was back... always, it was always a neat thing to see any of the new monster designs and stuff in, in uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Because, like, before Yu-Gi-Oh! Obviously, I was into a bunch of other card games, but, like, nothing else grabbed me than Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, nothing else really grabbed me, uh quite like it did just because the designs were so crazy and varied now the unfortunate thing is um wasn't the richest kid around the block and was in the middle of a move i believe this was around the time of uh yeah there was stuff going on in my life um I was moving when uh, they were kind of noticing there was something mentally wrong with me and all that, which unfortunately I wouldn't get a diagnosis of until I was 18. And after the move, it was pretty dang lonely. Didn't have the same friends to talk to, didn't have someone to talk about Digimon or Pokemon or anything like that. But, um, I started seeing Yu-Gi-Oh! around the playground, and it was something I actually liked that other people like. Like, especially when you have autism, Asperger's, all that, it's really hard to find common ground with people. So to have something nerdy like Yu-Gi-Oh! be a common ground that even I could be like, I enjoy this. It's not like a sport or anything. It's cool monster cards. At first, I didn't have a deck or anything. I remember this one time I tried to join in on this duel, drew my own, like, Yu-Gi-Oh card. Who knew I'd do that legitimately? <laughs> uh, but I couldn't find any legit. of them. I, I told you the other, the other day I was going to try to find my, my old cards <laughs> I drew. I couldn't find any of them. Yeah, it was just... It was a... Uh, <laughs> It was a silly little card. It was just me trying to be a little clown to kind of be part of the conversation. I did start getting some cards, but, you know, again, I was poor, so I didn't, like, get a booster pack every week or anything like that. But there was this one time I got um, Duelist of the Roses, and they came with the Magnet Warriors. Yeah. And was, this is... I was starting to talk to people in my neighborhood, which is... It's something that cannot be done anymore. That that's like a kid exclusive thing. Mm -hmm. Um but I remember this kid was like, Are those the Magnum Warriors? I'm like, yeah, and they you know in the first episode where Kaiba takes out all those cards for those blue eyes white dragons? Oh here's, here's that, all these but... cards for those magnet warriors. Yeah. Think of that, except I said yes instead of the <laughs> cowboy. <laughs> and unfortunately, it wasn't like the same quality card, so it the person found out like you could kind of peel it off, which was different than the other cards. So I had to give up like their rarest cards, but they but I kind of cried a little, so they're like, okay, you can keep all of them except like blue eyes and all that. Just give me the rare ones, you can have all the other ones. <laughs> which <laughs> Yeah. But I remember, like a lot, a lot of the friendships I had during that period of time was because of, like Yu-Gi-Oh. It was the one, the one nerdy thing that I was allowed to talk about, you know. Yeah. And now and... we sit here playing it every week and being big funny people. 
<laughs> yeah. One day I'll be able to draw monsters like he was able to draw monsters because those Cypher the Sky Dragon always. The moment I saw Cypher the Sky Dragon, the moment my fascination for monster designs escalated. And you have no idea how disappointed I've been in monster designs ever since Yu Gi Oh! Like, it put such a high bar for me. <laughs> Dude. You make some hella nice monster designs. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do better. With that being said, obviously, we can't talk about it the entire stream. There's other things we want to talk about. There's other things going down. But, to, but Kazuki Takahashi has been a humongous influence on a lot of us and a lot of you guys watching as well. And we hope to keep going with everything. We love Yu-Gi-Oh! We love this card game. We love everything about it. And, uh, and there's a couple of things that, you know, let's not worry about. Let's not worry about, uh, about, about certain things. None of those things are in this card game or in this version. Um, Listen, he didn't make the link months. It's good. <laughs> but <laughs> let's get around to some other important things to talk about. Thank you very much, Kazuki Takahashi. And, uh, so it's FOMO's birthday. Yeah, Happy man. birthday, FOMO. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's better oh, than that? Grievo and a time wizard, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so that's something. Um, Why do you mean that's something? <laughs> I just love that, like, yeah. that, like this one's... It's, it's, so, it's so funny. The other day... Uh, whenever we were talking about this, what we're going to be doing here, whenever, whenever I think it was me, FOMO, and Will were in a call, we were talking, uh, it was just like, you know, it's like, oh, we get to talk about freaking Kazuki Takahashi on, on your birthday. Uh, and it's just like, FOMO said something about, oh, of course it's my birthday. Yeah, and I'm I like, I, I think what I said is, yeah, of course we're fucking talking about it. And I you said, yeah, it was on mine. He died on mine. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> we're talking about it on yours. He died on mine. <laughs> On my birthday! That means you have to pick up his sword. You have to be the new Konami. <laughs> I don't want to be the new Konami. I want to be the new... That's, I don't want to I don't want to associate him with Konami. <laughs> yes! Very, happy, happy birthday, Fomo. It was good, good, good times, good times. 